Okay. Um, so thank you again for taking some time to talk with us today about your, your life and the way that Wayne Law has, has been a part of it. So you grew up in Detroit and you went to Miami for high school or, and, right, and then came back. Yes, uh, and then went to college at Michigan. Yeah, so, so, so talk about why you decided to come back to Michigan for U of M and then stay to go to Wayne Law. I didn't leave voluntarily to go to Florida and uh, I, mean, I really enjoyed my childhood in Michigan and you know had great friends and uh, it was always my dream when I left to go to the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it was just kind of natural you know coming back I spent all my uh, after I moved in freshman year of high school spent all my summers in uh, Michigan and uh, and then I thought I'd be living in Detroit. Uh, W after I graduated school. And so then you went to working, Wayne Law? Went to Wayne State. Yeah, and then, so, um, so why Wayne Law? Why was that your, your law school of choice? Well, it, it was, um, you had thing they called the uh, draft in those days. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was going to get uh, my mm. MBA at Michigan. Didn't really know when I graduated school what I wanted to do. Mm. Had no idea. Mm. Uh, I didn't think I wanted to be a lawyer, but I didn't really know for sure until um, I went to Wayne State. <laughs> But then I, uh, when I graduated, I went to uh, NYU and got my master's mm -hmm. in law uh, at NYU uh, and came back to Detroit to practice for two years. And you became a tax attorney, yes? Yeah, for two years. And then um, I decided that I'd like to, having spent a year in New York, being single, uh, the lure of New York was there, you know, and if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, and uh, being single and all that. So um, I left and... Uh, after two years in Detroit practicing law to go to Wall Street mm. um, in real estate, uh, primarily uh, because I had a number of real estate clients that really enjoyed that while I was uh, practicing. Was it an easy transition from practicing law to going into real estate? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love business, I guess, and mm. that was more, it had more of, a, <coughs> of an interest in business than I did in practicing law. And so that was really a natural, you know, progression. I didn't know at that point that I wanted to have my own company, um, but that came up later, um, after uh, working in New York for, you know, about two years, um, and then getting fired. And I figured, hey, I can't go on another interview, <laughs> and maybe it's time to go on my own, you know. So uh, things just worked out. Yeah, and then very so fortunate. you branched out, and one of your first major developments was on the East River Walk. Well, I first started the company, that was a, quite a few years later, but uh, I first started in affordable housing hmm. uh, because I was able to sell the tax shelter using my legal background uh, in terms of structuring deals, which I had learned um, while I was in Detroit as a tax lawyer. And then um, uh, in New York, learning a little bit about finance and, uh, and real estate and corporate finance. Um, so I uh, used that background, really starting a company in the first eight years, just concentrated in learning how to become a developer of affordable housing mm -hmm. um, and also doing an awful lot of uh, 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 selling tax shelters to wealthy investors, really using the, the, the background that I had. And then um, from there, once I had a, a, about uh, went out and branched out into other areas and other sectors of real estate. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I probably had ADD at the time and I'd learn one thing <laughs> and then develop kind of a uh, silo with people really understanding and growing that area and growing on to a next area. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, uh -huh. so the, and growing the, the uh, what we called our uh, finance side of the business was really initially selling tax shelters, then selling debt and equity to mm. uh, investors. And uh, that side of the business uh, eventually became the largest provider of debt and equity for affordable housing in the United States. Um, and we sold that business probably 15 years ago um, for several hundred million dollars. And then uh, uh, because it really acted as a backbone of cash flow to really build the business upon. Uh, and uh, then we expand into yeah. other sectors, into other cities, and you know it's it's been a good ride. And so when you, you uh, I mean, Time Warner Center is one of those, you know, um, the one of the jewels of New York. It's one of the, it is one of those places that people come to see and, and shop and live and go to Whole Foods and all the rest. So sure. um, could you tell me a little bit about your vision for Time Warner and how it came about, and also really what led to your decision to um, build this. Um, well, I mean, our company had grown, and I guess it was around uh, 
uh, about 1996, the city had a, uh, a proposal for the development of Columbus Circle, which uh, then there stood a, a coliseum and an old office building. Mm -hmm. I had my offices were on the corner of 59th and Madison, and I looked at it continually. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, in the um, early 90s, when New York was really suffering through a, a depression, if you will, c close to it, um, and uh, I looked at it, and um, it was undeveloped. And I tried, and I had a deal to bring in Kmart, mm. an old Detroit name, mm -hmm. yeah. using my contacts yeah. there to bring Kmart and all their subsidiaries to, on a temporary basis to occupy uh, the Coliseum, which had been uh, vacant and dormant for a number of years. Um, and that almost got approved, but really led me to really understand and think about the d uh, development potential of Columbus Circle. Uh, so when they had a uh, RFP for uh, Columbus Circle, you know, we entered the RFP and, um, and I saw it as probably the best undeveloped site in New York at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, the economy didn't necessarily allow for a development of a world-class building, but I thought that's what needed to be there uh, and I was able to entice Time Warner to join me and put their uh, corporate offices here, mm -hmm. relocate from Rockefeller Center. Mm -hmm. Um, and giving them a deal that they thought was a great deal. It worked out for us, and uh, I think the rest is yeah. history. I mean, it's really turned out to be uh, uh, far, you know, well, it's probably what I really envisioned, you know, and it's nice to have something uh, come out to that. Usually in a mm -hmm. d development of this size, it's usually the second owner who really makes mm -hmm. it. <laughs> uh, but we were very fortunate. It had met with an immediate uh, the reception was great and immediate success. So mm -hmm. that was. Uh, and now we've got Hudson Yards, one of the, the most exciting developments in the city, if not the world, right now. And and uh, you know, t tell us a little about about your vision for Hudson Yards and um, how you uh, came about wanting to invest uh, and make this really. Well, well, after you know, after you do a, a, a project like Time Warner Center and you see how it's really transformed an area and I think every developer as you get bigger and you want to do things that are transformative and have a real impact on the city that you're you know you're working with um, so we saw what the impact of Time Warner Center was and when the opportunity to develop Hudson Yards uh, which was really like uh, six times the size of Time Warner if you will who were up to about 19 million square feet and really build a new city within New York City in Midtown I mean, that opportunity, you know, certainly didn't go unnoticed and mm -hmm. uh, we were fortunate enough to be selected for that. And I think what we'll be developing is probably one of the most, uh, the lar will be the largest urban development in the United States history, but also it'll have a real impact as really being a sustainable environment and something that I think, you know, uh, other developments will shoot to accomplish mm. in, in the future. Mm -hmm. So, so it, with that, what, what can folks developing Detroit and, and the, the focus on developing Detroit learn from or what what what, what advice can you offer those? Well, who you got to do it one step at a time. Mm. I mean, Detroit has a lot, you know, uh, to overcome at this point in time. It's a question of jobs and, you know, uh, just because you want to develop it and you, you have a place, you have to have a, an economy that allows something to happen. Mm. And I think Detroit, um, and, and you've got to really get the idea that you have to create jobs within uh, Detroit, and it can't just be within a uh, two miles two mile square area in downtown. It's got to branch out from that, and you got to obviously be able to provide all the services that are needed for people to wanting to live and work there. You know, the safety, the education, um, and everything else. And Detroit is really has a very little has very little infrastructure today. And, uh, and I think you really have to show people that it's going to be safe to bring them back to the city, create those jobs that are nearby where they live, because mm -hmm. that's today what everything is all about. Mm -hmm. People don't want to spend all their life you know, commuting, and uh, they prefer not to. Um, and I think Detroit, though what it's been through, it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, it's, I think they're making a lot of uh, inroads, but it's going to be a long haul. Yeah, and the power of placemaking is so great both as a attractor to, uh, to a city, but also is. Yeah, no, there's no question. It's yeah. a question of place making. You got to create an environment where people want to be, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, 
And I think, you know, I, I really applaud what Danny Gilbert's doing mm -hmm. for, for Detroit. And I think... Another Wayne Law alum. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yes. know that. Uh -huh. that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. He's, he's terrific. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's doing great things for the city. And, you know, I think a lot of people really have got to get behind him and support, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on. And uh, I hear good things. Yeah, it's an exciting time in the city, but we've got a long right. way to go for sure with right. that, d d from a development standpoint. So let's talk a little bit about the other other work that you've done um, in particular. As you know, I'm I'm a big football fan, and and uh, <laughs> <laughs> having uh, grown up in a in a in a football town, uh, what what about uh, what what have been some of the challenges and surprises surprises that you've seen in owning a a team in the NFL, and uh, and how has your legal background helped shape well, your decisions? My legal background has really helped me my whole life. Mm. You know, um, it teaches you how to think. It teaches you really, you know, the differences of when you look at things, how to really find a, determine really what the issues are and how to deal with the issues, and uh, um, I, I think it's something that was a you know I, I'm very happy that you know with the uh, education that I had has helped me you know succeed. Um, but I mean, I guess it was just a lifelong dream to want to own a football team, and uh, fortunate I was in a position to do it, and mm -hmm. uh, and it was Miami, a place where I you know have a home and where I went to high school and. Uh, so, and we do a lot of work down there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, you know, but it has its challenges. I mean, it's nothing like anything else in business you can really uh, kind of equate it to because it's, it's got its own rules. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot easier to build a business and be successful than it is to develop a winning football team. And certainly, mm -hmm. you know, those losses every, on Monday mornings are very frustrating, and which today is Monday morning, and we had a loss last night. but. Uh, uh, one that we needed to win, but uh, still, uh, the yeah, ideal and the challenge. I mean, I, I love challenges, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think we'll get it right. You know, the things we're doing, and uh, you know, it's a question of putting the right people together. And it's like any success you have, you can't do it yourself. You got to really surround yourself with the best there is, and really look to do the right things. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, hopefully we'll get there soon. But it's I've really enjoyed it. You know, we're putting a lot of different parts. We're very engaged now in the. Uh, sports field and a lot of other different areas. Um, you know, after having a, a career in real estate, which is still my primary, uh, you know, career, I'm now looking to, uh, especially with developing Hudson Yards, and our company has grown to probably being the largest developer in the world, so mm -hmm. it's, you know, <laughs> we, we have our challenges, and it's exciting, you know, every day coming to work, and, uh, but being able to really be involved in something that's totally different. Hmm. You know, it's a great diversification. And, uh, yeah, and I love sports as kind of our greatest common denominator across cultures. It can really bring people together. Yeah. Um, I teach a course on sports and inequality, and uh, you really where we talk about the way in which sports can be used to um, overcome the, the the differences of in, that inequality can can build in a society or across societies. And I know you've done some work in, uh, with, with issues of bullying and uh, that a little bit. I was wondering if you could talk kind of and about... No, no, it's really interesting that yeah. you're doing that. Um, and it's, it's kind well, of coincidental. Talk, yeah, because, yeah. Because, um, I mean, uh, you know, last year we had an incident in Miami with uh, two of our players with bullying and really the lack of respect they had for each other and the way they spoke with each other. And, you know, having played ball and, and been around a lot of uh, sports my whole life, you know, um, there is a lot of that. Mm -hmm. you know, most of it, we, we can shrug it off and is all being good natured, but certainly there is a certain amount of the bullying or if you call it that, or, or the lack of respect and, and civility, how people really treat each other. Um, and I really thought, what, if used what, what happened to us in Miami last year um, uh, as a lesson of something that I could have an impact on. As a matter of fact, uh, I was in Detroit um, the day before I was going down to Miami uh, where they wanted to um, take my testimony in terms of what I knew about mm -hmm. the incidents there. And I was with the governor and, uh, and I brought the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development and they gave me a tour of Detroit and it was mm -hmm. kind of an interesting meeting and it really was heartbreaking to see how Detroit had deteriorated from the Detroit that I knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I really saw it was a question of racism. Mm -hmm. and uh, and. A, really had an, a profound impact. So I've put together a nonprofit and that has brought together all the leagues. I'm in the process of doing it. I hope it really pans out, where we bring all the, all the leagues in every single sport together, and I've brought them together, as well as in networks. 
and using sports, knowing as a basis how we can change the paradigm of, of today of how people treat each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, because athletes are always role models. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what level that you're really playing. I mean, if you're a young kid and you're playing organized ball, you're a role model to your peers. Mm -hmm. And as well as in, as in the professional levels, all the way through. So if we can use that as a way to change the way people deal and treat each other, I think we can have a real impact. And so the leagues look at this as something where they're all together for the first time they've ever really looked at it. Now I have an opportunity, now it's a question of being able to put it together. Yeah. And so that's what we're in the process of doing. So, but also soccer is another okay. big, and, and I went to the big house where Manchester United and Real Madrid played, and, right. and I, it was one of my, I love going to the big house generally, right. but that was something. So I, I know that you had a bit of a, you have a big, bit of an interest in, in that or involved in. Well, I saw with soccer, you know, when in Miami, we owned the, uh, the stadium as well as the football team. And so when I uh, saw the opportunities, we had a game there that uh, featured, I think, uh, Barcelona against Chivas from Mexico when we drew 73,000 people. Mm. And knowing how hard it is to fill up a football stadium mm -hmm. down in Miami, mm -hmm. it's not a great sports town. Mm. I said soccer really has, mm. a, there's a great opportunity there. But it was really bringing the international teams to the United States and creating a tournament so they're not just playing a friendly. Uh, so last year was our second year uh, and we had uh, Real Madrid against uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, Man U. Mm -hmm. Um, and so uh, this year we're, you know, we're looking to bring in uh, uh, Barcelona and uh, probably playing Chelsea. Um, and now I don't know if it'll be at the big house, um, but because um, they've had kind of a change in the leadership there. Who's um, the biggest soccer, bigger crowd, biggest crowd to ever watch a soccer game in, in, in the United, United States? Right. I mean, I right. was. So we're, I mean, special. we're excited, you know, yeah. um, and we'll talk to them if they, you know, I think Barcelona and Chelsea would be. It would know, be fun. It was a fun game. It, it's it was a fun also game. Great, it's great to see people because I've been to the Big House before, for, obviously for football games, but to see the different people who came from all over the country to experience the game in that stadium and and who I was sitting with and their kids and their kids learning about soccer, it was it was a really special you know, experience. It's really special and it's really funny though when you're having uh, been in Europe several times mm -hmm. after and just hearing the reaction hmm. of the Europeans, because that game was televised. Huh. And it and was, was really, it positive? and was everybody was thing? so positive. And huh. that's all they could talk about, huh. was having 110,000 people watching, you know, yeah. two teams in the United States. Yeah. So, uh, that's great. It, 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 you know, it, it was great. Yeah, it would be just interesting from a market standpoint as well, branching into soccer. Well, it's a, I mean, it's like a that. growing sport and, it you know, is, today. Yeah. And, uh, People love it, and, and it's unique. But you got to have the top teams to really yeah. kind of draw those kind of, yeah. you know. And it's not going to be the American teams. Mm -hmm. Certainly, yeah. you won't get that type of support for now. For we're now. hoping in the future. Well, <laughs> we're dealing with now. Well, yeah, yeah, certainly, <laughs> certainly. Um, so, with with your business work, your, your sports work, you're, you're also very well known for your philanthropy. And I was curious about the, um, you know, with all the all the all the um, the work that you've done and all the investments you've made. What is what is your hope? hope what impact do you hope to have with your philanthropy? Well, I mean, is to make an impact with that. I mean, you know, I, I think I probably started out with the idea that, you know, one of the reasons we're here is to make the world a little better place than when we came here, you know, mm. when we leave. And so I've always believed in giving back as well. And so I've, uh, I guess that was kind of ingrained, you know, when I was a young child growing up in Detroit, you know. Um, yeah, you know, your, your Uncle Max, Max Fisher, and, and uh, is, is a, you know, an icon and a, and a role model for many of us. And we hold our commencement ceremonies in the Max Fisher Music Center every year. Oh, yeah, sure. uh, so nice. can you talk a little bit about well, your Uncle Max? Well, I mean, Max certainly growing your, up your having him as your and uncle, you know, yeah. and always saying, you know, be like your Uncle Max, he mm -hmm. certainly had an impact on my life, mm -hmm. you know, to say the least. Yeah, any, and any so, fond memories of him that you recall? Oh, many, many, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm constantly being reminded, you know, if I'm not remembering him, other people reminding mm -hmm. me about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had an impact on many people's lives, mm -hmm. and he was a great, great man. And uh, certainly I was very fortunate, you know, that he was my uncle. And uh, I guess it really gave you always, you know, with your parents and grandparents saying, you know, you got to be like your uncle. It, mm -hmm. you know, kind of drove me and probably inspired me. And, mm -hmm. you know, probably a lot of the reason I am the way I am today. Mm. 
certainly a powerful role model to have in many ways. Very fortunate. Yeah. Very, very yeah. fortunate. Um, it, so, we, you know, with, with all those um, aspects of your work um, and, and all that you're known for, um, what else do you hope to be known for and, or, you know, in, in, with all the work that you do? You've got sports uh, and real estate. And I mean, you know, I, I, I don't think, you know, I live to make satisfy myself, not to mm. see, you know, in, in, in how other people might remember me. I got, you have to be happy with yourself. And, you know, and you live with yourself, and uh, you know I'm very lucky. I mean, I'm living the dream, if you will. Mm. You know, and uh, and seeing how I can really have an impact and make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, today, I mean, uh, 74, and I think there's, you know, I haven't slowed down, and, and uh, you know, I like to think I'm, you know, busy the rest of my life, and I can have a lot of, you know, impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, you know. Just getting started. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> just getting warmed up. So. Just getting, I'm warmed up. Uh, I'm ready than, to go. <laughs> other than your uh, your uncle Max, any other role models for you? Well, I was very fortunate. You know, my my mother was was, mm. was great, and she had my parents were, were great, and uh, and I've had people. You, know, you 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 need help along the way, and you know, for anybody to believe that they, it was all about them and they did it themselves, I think you know, mm. that's kind of a fallacy. I've had people that have helped me along the ways. You know, I think people see someone who really is trying to do the right thing and working hard, they want to help them, you know, and, I, and uh, I've been fortunate that they've been there. I've had these mentors and things like that. You know, having, when I moved to New York, I had no family, and, you know, and uh, didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I, I love this place. It's mm -hmm. been great, mm -hmm. you know. It's yeah. probably as ideal place as you could really go if you really want to have an impact somewhere. And what is success to you? You know, I, I think what you may, I think you got to be happy with what you're doing, you know, and that you're having an impact. And I think at the end of the day, you know, you, you want to be proud of your family and, uh, uh, and you know, and staying healthy, really. Mm, yeah. <laughs> right now, it's about staying healthy. Well, so if you could go back to uh, yourself in law school and give yourself a, a piece of advice or tell yourself anything of uh, knowing now um, what you wish you had known then. Uh, what would you say to yourself when you're in law school? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people go to law school because of the idea they want to be a lawyer. But I'd have, I think it's a great background. I'd have your mind opened up to other things. I think it can lead into a lot of other opportunities. Um, and I would just, you know, soak everything in and, and, you know, put yourself in a position to grow, no matter, albeit the law or whatever profession it is. Mm. Um, and I think you know Wayne State was a great place, and I'm sure with you as a dean, it'll even be better. Thanks. So uh, uh, I, you know, I just think that uh, you're in a good place, and you know the opportunities are there. It's just, it's a question for an individual to take advantage of it. Well, we'll work to do that. Uh, yeah. Thank you again, Mr. Ross, for your time. And uh, anything else? You any other advice you want to give to our students who all are admire you a great deal, as do I? No. <laughs> the world's your opportunity. Take, <laughs> take advantage of it. Thanks. Well, uh, great to uh, spend this time with you. And Thank you. Know, certainly hope you, you can come to, to um, visit with us at the law school maybe when the, the magazine comes out. And, Love to. Uh, and uh, talk yeah, to more of our fun. students. It'd be yeah, fun. I'm glad I, that you reached out to me, and it was great. Thank you. We have a, a gift for you. Oh to God, add a little bit way? of Roy <laughs> Green <laughs> well, to, your, uh, <laughs> to your I got, office. I, I have a Michigan helmet in yeah, my I, office. I know you do. Now, now we have a, a warrior helmet. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've never worn one of these. <laughs> In fact, when I went when I went to Wayne, they weren't they're the Warriors now. They're the Warriors. I know we were the is, the is tart. That, is that what you have to be to live in Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> anywhere really. A strong Warriors, not a bad. A strong uh, Warrior. Okay. Bad bad. The colors have changed and the uh, <laughs> and the name has changed. But it's uh, but, but it's still the same old place. It right? is still a great stadium, great football team, and uh, and so we uh, we. Uh, Hope you come back to a game okay. sometime, maybe okay. next season. But okay. but we'll you know add this to your your office collection. Well, thank you. We're grateful you. for your time.